I'm Ellis Martin, and this is Money Talk Radio. Join me now for a conversation with Terry Lynch, CEO of Power Nickel, which trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol PNPN, and in the U.S. on the OTC as PNPNF. Power Nickel is a Canadian junior exploration company focusing on developing the high-grade NISC project into Canada's first carbon-neutral nickel mine. The NISC project is located in Quebec province and is benefited by generous tax credits that cover 50% of exploration costs. A Hydro-Quebec substation across the road supplying low-carbon, inexpensive hydropower, a stable political environment with strong government and First Nation partners. It's located besides a major highway and nearby town, and there is shallow mineral depth. The NIST property comprises a significant land position with numerous high-grade intercepts. Power Nickel is focused on expanding the historical high-grade nickel copper PGE mineralization with a series of drilled programs designed to test the initial NISC discovery zone and to explore the land package for adjacent potential nickel deposits. Terry, welcome back to the program. Great to visit with you today. Yeah, great to be here, Ellis. Always a pleasure to be on the show. We're off to a, an interesting start for this year. You've got a lot of drill results coming out. Let's review the past few months and let us know where we're going with Power Nickel. Sure. So obviously 2024 was a solid year for us as mining stocks go. Top performer in Canada maybe number three in the world in terms of uh, companies over 100 million market cap. So we certainly can't be unhappy with the stock performance. And that was driven 100% because of the exciting discoveries that we've made at NISC and in particular at the line zone, where we have shown through 30, 40 different drill holes and assays, massive assays of high-grade copper and PGMs with gold and silver. And analysts estimate somewhere in the 5 to 9 million tons of 5, 6, 7% copper equivalent, pick a number. This is like crazy stuff. Those results drove the stock and that was a great accomplishment in, in 2024. And and then what will drive 2025? Our perspective is as you look at us and compare to other high-grade polymetallic deposits, which is what our discovery is, you'll see that we're probably trading at 10 to 20 percent of what other comparables are. So I would say we're still very early days that we think there's still a lot of asymmetric opportunity here and that our deposit is our mineralized zone. That's not a deposit because legal that implications there. Our mineralized zone is growing. We think the first 10,000 meters got us to, let's say, 5 million tons. Okay, let's go with that. What's this next 30,000 meter program that we're halfway through going to bring us to? Will it double or triple it? I would think highly likely. And it's going to grow from there. So I think as exciting as 2024 was, and it was certainly good, I think 2025 is going to be better. That's my forecast. How do you see the demand for copper ramping up in North America and Canada and the U.S. over the next year? With the change in government here in the U.S., do you think that's just going to help everybody, most importantly, power nickel? It certainly seems that the copper market's going to be bullish. We look at things not just next year, but over the next five to 10 years. And through any lens, and I think almost universally people would agree that there's just not enough material out there, especially in the copper world, probably if for sure also in the nickel world, probably in platinum as well. There's just going to be a dearth of these materials, especially in safe jurisdictions. It's highly likely that there'll be more demand than there is supply. So that should be bullish for the commodity price. And we like the commodity price where it's at right now. We can make a ton of money right here. But we suspect that the commodity uh, cycle is just starting and we're likely to be the beneficiary of that. One of my friends in the business predicts that the majors are just going to be looking for projects like yours and others around the world, copper projects, companies like Rio Tinto, for instance, just to eat them up. So there should be a lot of M&As over the next couple of years. We're getting a lot of knocks in the door. And of course, we are very welcoming to those knocks, but we're at the really catbird seat side of things. And you know, we've got a hot one. We've got capital. We don't need to raise money right now. We've got an amazing exploration team that's doing a ridiculously great job of ramping this thing up. So it's time for us to grow this baby. Let's see how big the lion can be. And yeah, at the end of the day, will the majors be at the table? A thousand percent. But that day's not going to come anytime soon because you're in it for the long run. Yeah. People ask me, will you sell the project? And of course, everything's for sale at the right price. People say, what if I offered you 500 million? I say, no, we're, we're going to get the 500 million in just a few months anyway. It doesn't matter in my view. But I said, if you offered me two billion, now you're talking an order of magnitude from where we're at now. So that's where we need to be talking. And my perspective is we're going to get there too. But if that they came in and took the risk off the table, great. If we keep at it for a year, I believe we'll be north of a billion. And then the number might be five. So I'm always about looking for my shareholders. I want to deliver asymmetric returns for them. And if somebody is going to step up and buy us, they have to take away a lot of our upside risk by paying for it up front. And it's still value for them. And I believe that'll happen. That'll be our outlook. 
This interview now sounds like the beginning of a negotiation. I like it. Terry, bring us up to date on spin out. What's happening? Yes, I think tomorrow or the next day, we'll be getting out an update to our shareholders on a spin out. It'll close January 31, we expect, or, or shortly thereafter. Putting out a bit of an advisory to our shareholders to say, in very late and specific terms, that on the spin out, they should re be requesting their brokers to directly put the spin out shares in their name or the name of Endeavor Trust. The reason why we recommend them doing that is that we have always held uh, a belief that our nickel stock is massively shorted. We have a lot of data points that support that. And the way to put those guys in place is to do this spin out. And the, if our shareholders listen and request this, that will put a lot of pressure on the brokers to deliver the stock they don't have, which would be very good thing for us. So that's a uh, part of the advisory that's going out tomorrow. It's uh, pretty much laid out. We put in a video with it as well to help to explain it. We don't recommend people buy this security as a short squeeze. We think you should buy it because it's a hell of a mining project and it's going to do very well in any event. However, in the short term, because of this tactic that we've done for good business reasons, there's going to be some interesting fireworks. That's certainly something that should be on the investor's radar. Looks like a very nice bonus for Power Nickel shareholder. Terry, it's been great catching up with you. Thanks so much for the update. I look forward to more information soon when you have it. All right, Alice, you take care. Have a great day. Cheers. I've been speaking with Terry Lynch, CEO of Power Nickel, which trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol PNPN and in the U.S. on the OTC as PNPNF. Get the complete story by going to powernickel.com. Subscribe to Money Talk Radio and the Ellis Martin Report. It's free. Go to ellismartin.com.